So I've just got a gasket kit for the XT350. I'm going to cut this package open and I'm going to put them on the printer scanner and make a vector out of them. So for the different case gaskets in the future, I can just take that vector, put it in our laser cutter at work and cut out a new gasket instead of having to buy these kits just for the case gaskets. All right, we have the base gasket and the chain tensioner gasket, I believe. So there's the scanned image. So here we go. This is the original image, which if I hide, here we have our vector, which a laser cutter can now cut out of a raw sheet of gasket material. Alright, let's go ahead and get this off of here. Nope. A couple of nubbies holding it on. So I forgot the actual gasket, but I do have the original scanned image, and this is going to be pretty close. So, pretty close. I had to scale it a little bit, so I'm going to take this home and see how this looks compared to the original gasket. So upon getting home, the printed image of the gasket, like I said, seemed to be a little bit bigger than the actual gasket itself. To match it, I scaled it to 77.32% of the original size that the vector decided to be in the laser cutter software. The 75% though, which was a little bit smaller than the printed image, fits the gasket so well that you almost couldn't tell the gasket was underneath it. So 75% is what I'm going to have to scale all of the gaskets in this kit when I go to cut them if I ever need them in the future. So you can see here that the uh, edges of the gasket stick out. They're a little bit bigger than a normal piece of paper, which is again why I had to do the gasket scan in two parts. But we'll at least be able to see if the parts that are supposed to be the right size are the right size. It'll give me the rough idea. So I got it on the canvas. It was originally a little bit bigger than the canvas size. Uh, I did the 75%, so let's go ahead and frame it. Like I said, it's going to be a little bit bigger than the paper, or a lot bigger than the paper. The real test would be to be able to cut it all the way around to make sure that I'm not just bending this into place. So this test is kind of useless, but the paper gasket was under there. It is the right size at least, so the scale is correct. So yeah, pretty much we, we can make whatever we want now. I had it burn into the cardboard basically what it would cut, and as you can see, it's a pretty perfect match. So, yeah, scaling and doing gaskets in two parts works perfectly fine. That means I can recreate this if I ever need to pull that clutch basket off again. I'll show you oh, that carbon buildup. That's a lot. All right, I'm going to pull the jug off as well because I want to replace the base gasket because I believe I tore it last time. Oh, yeah, it's major torn. 
The piston still looks pretty good. I rebuilt it years and years and years ago. I don't even remember if the video exists anymore. And I put a new Weissco piston in it. The ring still got a lot of tension left in them. That's good. Crank bearing still nice and tight. I don't know where all that metal that I found in the oil filter came from, but it makes me real nervous. Now you can't feel it because obviously you're not operating the drill, but it goes down super easy, and I can actually feel right when I hit the bottom of the hole because it that it, that resistance increases like tenfold. I'm barely pushing it down to take out the threads because there's almost no threads that I'm already drilling out anyway because they're stripped. And then when I hit the bottom, it almost just stops. So I'm gonna go ahead and do all eight because five of them are stripped, and I'm sure the other three aren't far behind. And we'll tap them, helicoil them. And and then uh, my cams will actually be held down now. Redrilled and tapped. Helicoiled back to M6 by one. Just gotta put my tool down in there and pop off that little and make it flat.
29 foot pounds. Go through and check them again. All right. Look at the divots of my arm from grabbing the engine. Now I'm lubing these up because these back grooves I want to make sure they kind of handle the torsional, the, the forward and backwards uh, clearance of these cams and I want to make sure they're well lubricated because obviously there's no bearings in here so if these get chewed up the heads just scrap like just that's it is what it is. I like to use the drill because I can use the clutch set really low. Like I'm set on three and then I can get all the cam caps torqued at the same value, roughly. And then I can hit them with the torque wrench in inch pounds. Now the 18 year old me that stripped all these out obviously didn't do this. Or use the torque wrench to tighten the cam caps. Which is what I'm going to do next. So the cam cap bolts are 7.2 foot pounds or 86.4 inch pounds, I think. I'm gonna do 86. At least they're not stripped, because they used to be mostly stripped. Is that a big spider on the wall again? Man, leave my shop alone. Again, the reason this bike's probably been so unreliable, this is literally the first time I ever torqued the cam cap bolts with a torque wrench. I'm trying to improve. And they spin pretty nice. So, yeah, that is not bad at all. Totally just realized I forgot to put in my timing chain guide, like usual. I always forget to put that in. Okay, hopefully I get lucky here and it'll fit. Oh, nice. Nice. Awesome. That thing sits up in here. It's got these little tongs. And they sit down into the head like this. And then it has a little it has a little cutout down here that the bottom sits in. So now when you're timing it, the cams have these these little dots drilled in the back of that thrust washer that are supposed to line up with these lines on the back of the cam caps. And there's two timing marks according to the manual on the crankshaft. You can line up the keyway on the crank to this little pointer. And also on the back, this one's going to be almost impossible to see on camera. But this little pointer, there's a, a stamp T. I think you can see it right there. And those line up. That's top dead center. And if you get your chain tensioned with the crank lined up where it needs to be and the cams lined up where it needs to be, you should be good to go. All right, I got it timed. I got the chain kind of snug. I usually tighten it way too tight, and I think that's why I've been killing chains. When I rotate the flywheel back here so that this little T lines up with the pointer, my engine tries to fall over. Um, you can see a dot right there and a dot right there so 
We are all timed up. I don't know why this thing won't stay up anymore, but timed. So here's another credit to 18 year old me back in 2016. Um, I remembered I had some really long bolts in my extra parts box for this bike. You see they're uh, about as wide as my head. They're pretty big. I noticed right here that there was no bolt in here and I kind of forgot there was a hole there. So I took this bolt on the other side and this is exactly what I did. I got it in the hole, went to go let go of it and expected it to stop almost immediately and nope. You can see they go down in there with just enough left to uh, bolt down. So I these two bolts which presumably make sure that the head gasket doesn't leak oil, not necessarily compression, but oil from the timing chain. I just haven't had them in there for like seven years, and I've just gotten lucky that it hasn't leaked. So again, I'm trying to un 18 year old me this bike, and maybe it'll be reliable again, because everybody else on the internet says that theirs is reliable, and mine has been horrific. So I actually still have the original auto tensioner, uh, I put it back in because I always forget to check the chain tension on this and um, that's usually why it jumps time. So I'm going to actually put this back in. It jumped time originally because I thought that failed but I'm thinking now that the original timing chain was stretched. Because if you remember I did replace it in a, in a previous video and it was very stretched. I had that thing bottomed out and it still wasn't tight. So I'm going to give this auto tensioner another shot. It works for everybody else's bikes who seem to be very reliable, so I'll give it a shot here again. I broke the clutch basket because I'm a genius. Surprise, honestly, even 18 year old me didn't do that. So it's a little frustrating. All right, I got my new clutch basket in the mail. It's been a couple days, 42 bucks shipped. I think it's a decent price for me being an idiot and breaking the last one. I'm gonna try a different method to torque this one. But first I'm gonna get this thing cleaned up. It's kind of dirty. Oiled this bushing up nice. So what I'm going to try to do here to torque this is I'm going to simulate the pressure plate. I'm going to push on all these clutch plates to apply pressure so that it ties these two together. But it's using all of the teeth instead of one if you're trying to use like a screwdriver. And then I'm just going to jam like a paper towel or something in here so that the crank and the clutch basket don't spin. And then I can torque it to, I think it's 43 foot pounds. I got to look again. That's what I should have done before I broke the basket. All right, we are at 43 foot-pounds. So, Many people do this. I like to put a little glue in here around the corners. So when I am installing the valve cover, the gasket is not trying to fall out. It just makes it a lot easier. All right, the surface here is cleaned off and free of oil. I am going to fill all these holes with oil. So the oil pump doesn't have to fill them uh, before the cams have oil pressure. I'm just trying to give it the best chance at life because it's been terribly unreliable. Um, and then I'm going to put all the little caps in and slap the valve cover on. So if you notice that the valve cover looks terrible, um, I was supposed to powder coat it, but as you can see, 
pieces of my air system are everywhere because this tank ended up having a hit oh, I mean, this tank ended up having a pinhole in it and I didn't want to risk an explosion so we just have to deal with an ugly valve cover for now if it runs really well I can deal with an ugly valve cover just fine Now we'll see. The oil level dropped a pretty good bit now that uh, I bled the oiling system. Factory manual says the spark plug gap should be 28 to 32 thousandths. I'm at about 28 or 29 thousandths. So I'm going to go ahead and chuck a new plug in here and almost ready to start. Alright, because I glass beaded the jug in the head, I want to get all the oil off of it before I first fire it up and get it all hot so it doesn't burn on there. And uh, might as well get this all cleaned up while we're here. Man, I like that though with the, the uh, cylinder and the head being natural aluminum color rather than just painted black. So I think there's something wonky with the decompression lever because over here on the case, I just took the little 10 millimeter nut off the decompression lever and disengaged it so it doesn't work. And smokes that kind of sucks I was hoping I'd fix that somehow as usual nothing ever goes to plan I have a uh, bolt up here that's just puking oil for whatever reason this is the bolt in question it's probably not tightening down all the way or that o-rings worn out all right, I have put a washer underneath this to account for the squished out bushing that I can't replace. That will move it downwards in relation to the little step on the bolt that makes it stop threading in and hopefully will make it seal tight. Looks like it is no longer leaking. All right, I think I figured out the problem with the compression release. Obviously, the oil leak is fixed for now. It'll probably leak again later. 
Um, this didn't have any slack in it because I had this flipped on the other way. Um, it bent out this way, so it was pulling on the cable weird. If I mess the compression release, there's a, just a little bit of wiggle in it now, so I think it'll start up fine with the compression release. And so far, okay, compression release works. Let's see if it starts now. Now this rear cam seal, this little cam lobe is, uh, the cam lobe seal is leaking, of course, again. Like I said, it would leak again, it, like literally a minute later. Big rib is back, and hopefully this time not for a limited time. All right, uh, I'm gonna do a cold start now. We got the bike finished yesterday, ice cold. I'm gonna see if it's a first kick bike now. It's still garbage. I'll close the hole right here. Really? You couldn't look good for the camera once. Hey, guess what? It leaks again. Like I said, it would leak probably 20 more times. It's the same one that leaked before, and the washers only worked for a day. It's still smoking out of the exhaust. I shut it off like two minutes ago. Oh, look at all that oil. No bueno. This thing is burning oil so fast. Literally like when I bought it however many years ago, 10 years ago. It's literally, I wiped it with my finger, but it's running down the muffler. Uh, these piston rings literally have less than 300 miles on them. I mean, first and second gear miles, but still. Really shouldn't need rings again. Or a cylinder bore again. After a bit of a closer look, if you look right there, you'll see the seal actually tore from me torquing it down even more. So that's actually why it failed. So tightening them down extra, ripped them. Let's go ahead and get some new ones on. I want to do this with a tripod, but I want to get a better angle. If you put a socket on this thing that's bigger than the head of the bolt, just crank it in here. It's going to fall. Yep. It pushes the bushing off the bolt. Gets it over that little step. And then obviously you just switch size socket. Push it the other way, then you can get your bushing off easy. Yeah, replacing these might make a difference, huh? 
And just like I said, move down to a smaller size socket, crank your vise in, feel it pop on, and there you go. Bushing replaced. Probably cleaned it off, the socket wasn't super clean. <laughs> Other than smoking a lot, I don't see it losing any oil. Pushings are dry. Boat seals are dry. Yeah. Still clean for now.